Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Stand Up. And this is actually going to be a demo pretty much of my notification system. Um, so I'm going to show you in real time uh, what this looks like. So I have it running a local host. And I'm going to go over to my performance profiler. Um, and I'm going to explain basically what's happening. Oh, hold on. I have to refresh. Let me go back. <laughs> Let me... Uh... It might be still processing. I sent a bunch of messages to this just recently. Okay, so I went to my performance profiler. It currently is sending a lot of messages up to the back end that are being processed by my Rust microservice. Um, and you'll see a notification appear on the front end in probably just a few seconds. So I'm basically just looking at the temperature um, numbers that will be coming from this like this simulation of the engine. Uh, obviously, I haven't put a lot of time into making it look like an engine, but you can kind of get the the gist. So if we give it um, a few more seconds, it's probably sending like I don't know. It's, it's not sending too many every second. Um, I might lower my threshold before I see a notification. But if we let it sit here a second longer, <laughs> we will see it appear. There it is. Okay, so that's the first notification. So warning, engine overheating. So that happens in real time. There's no lag on the front end. This is able to run fine. I can use input fields with no lag and put whatever, do everything. There's no errors or anything. But then you're going to see a second notification appear that tells me to basically shut down the engine overheated. And that should appear um, in almost equal amount of time as the first one. Um, I'm gonna explain the architecture of this in a second once we see the second notification appear. Okay, so you see the shutdown engine overheated. So that notification is able to come down, causing no lag <clears throat> on the front end. The front end is able to do its thing and just continue to send up data um, and yeah, you can see that I now have real-time notifications wired up to my front end, um, and I will explain basically how all this works. So you can see on the side here, um, a couple things. So it's telling me I'm connected uh, via WebSockets to basically this endpoint I have set up through uh, SignalR um, to basically administer that um, WebSocket connection. So if we open up my all my list of uh, windows here, we can see um, I'm gonna walk I'm gonna step through this from front end to back end and then back to front end so if we go to the front end this is this web app is a dotnet web application and for the the front end specifically it's using react so I have a file or a component here called notifications um, and I'm using TypeScript so I have a signal R connector connected to this endpoint um, and I have it connected here, and I'm setting the notification that you saw displayed on the front end um, here. So basically, it just uh, when the notification is received, it's going to basically receive that, parse it, and then display it on the front end. Um, so not too crazy code. Um, this is the package I'm using. So just a signal R package from Microsoft. Um, Honestly, not a whole lot of stuff you have to set up, especially if you ever already have your components set up. You basically just need at some point to call that SignalR connector to basically start your WebSockets connection. Um, I'm probably going to move that this up um, to the parent component as opposed to the child, so that way the connection's um, already running. Maybe, depending on how I want to do that with my engine. We'll see. Um, so that's the front end. And the actual moving engine part is just all it's doing is just sending right now just mock data but this is the engine model here and I'm just sending this data up to my uh, to my backend endpoint which is um, which is right here for now I'm just have it on the home controller just to just to keep things easy I don't have to make it our file uh, so I have this post endpoint that basically takes in that engine model that you just saw and all all this endpoint is responsible for is publishing it to the uh, to the message bus or RabbitMQ. So this is going to so publish 
that um, engine model. For right now, I only have one consumer. Um, I don't know if I'm going to add consumers and publish basically broadcasts a message to all the consumers registered. So technically, I guess I don't need publish in this instance, but I'll just set it up just in case I do add another consumer. So that's that's how it's going from there. So at this point, we are now um, we are now in my Rabbit MQ engine queue. So this this queue will have all the engine data that's sent up, um, and I basically have it tied to every movement of the the cylinder. We'll call it a cylinder. So it's sending you know it's it's not sending a lot. It was like sending like maybe five a second. Not too nothing too crazy. But they're gonna be they're gonna go to this queue here, this engine queue. And then I have a Rust service listening to this queue. So this is my Rust um, program for now. And you can see a lot of numbers here, the 700. And the 700 corresponds to this number that I hard-coded here for temperature. Obviously, I'm not gonna leave it hard-coded, but for my prototype, I needed some mock data. So that's where the 700 comes from. The Rust microservice is responsible for listening to that engine's queue and then re receiving all those messages and then doing something with the messages, right? Performing some kind of logic, sending the messages somewhere else, doing whatever it needs to do. So I want to put most of the um, really data intensive uh, processes in this Rust service just because of how fast it is. So all this is doing currently is checking for the temperature and then if the temperature is greater than a certain you know, degree, certain number, um, so in, in my case, I'm checking if it's greater than 500, I'm gonna add it to, uh, I'm gonna add to this vector, and then if the vector length is, over, is equal to 200, then I'm gonna build this message, and then I'm going to publish the message up to my notifications queue. And then the same thing for once the messages get to 300, then I'm going to send another message saying shut down, engine overheated. So that's currently what the Rust microservice is doing, um, and it does it really, really well. And it's able to process a lot of data really quickly. Um, so at this point, we've, we've gone from the Rust service back to my notifications queue that are going to store those messages that we saw up here on the front end. So now they're in this queue. So now how we get from this queue back to my front end is we go back through um, my .NET back end in my notifications consumer. So I'm using mass transit to connect to my RabbitMQ uh, server locally. And I'm using, um, I just have registered this uh, notifications consumer class. And then you just define this consume method and then um, in my case, it's, it's raw JSON, and you saw a few videos back, kind of me stumbling around to figure out how to parse the raw JSON, but we figured that out, so now the message comes through as JSON, um, and that deserializes into notifications, which all it has is just a uh, message of type string, and then what I'm doing now is I'm then publishing, um, or I'm sending the message uh, with signal R. So you can see that I have injected uh, this iHub context, context of type notifications hub and I'm sending it um, you can see there the signature of this invokes a method on the connections represented by iClient proxy and since does not wait for a response from the receiver. So all it basically is just doing is just sending a message to all the receivers that are listening uh, basically on that on that socket we'll call it. Um, this took me a little bit to figure out that you could actually just inject this into whatever, wherever you need to call it. Um, you do, I think, still have to create your specific hub, which I have. Um, and I don't think we're actually using this because I'm injecting that iHub context. But if you did, um, if you did set this up, you could call this from like your your front end if you wanted to go that route. But for my case, I wanted to go outside of this hub from my back end down to my client so you, all you have to do is just inject this and then provide it the type of that hub and then you can just clients all and then send async so that works pretty well and I'm just pat I'm sending my uh, message down so at that point all that's left to do is for my front end to receive or to, to get that message 
So that's where this comes in. So this component uh, has, has basically established the WebSock connection. And so connection on, notifications received, it's gonna get that message in real time and then display it on the front end. And that's the architecture. So it feels like a lot uh, because it, it, it is a lot of moving parts. Um, and you'd, you'd be tempted to say for sure that like, you know, obviously because of how small this application is, is it necessary to do all this? And for this small of application, absolutely not, right? But that's not the point. It's, it's if you got to think of if this scaled up to, you know, now we have 100 engines running, uh, how we're going to process that. So you can see how you have to think of how, how this would scale. So in a large system, this is a legitimate way to handle this problem of notifications using SignalR. Uh, Rust is optional. I just want to use Rust because I know it could process the data really fast. Um, but solutions like this is really kind of what, um, what allows you to grow a system and solve complicated problems in very, very large systems that deal with, you know, hundreds of millions of records, um, you know, per whatever time scale you're, you're operating in. Uh, the bottleneck that I immediately know I'm going to encounter for sure is the connection from my um, front end and trying to go through this endpoint here to publish the data to my RabbitMQ. I need to figure out a better way to do that. I'm going to get, um, I've already seen, um, once I've, once I, here, I'll, actually I'll show you, maybe I can reproduce it now. Um, let's go here and then, so I basically have this broken thing right here. This is supposed to determine the speed of the things and you can see that I'm sending a lot of messages now. <laughs> And you can see that it process, it's processing like crazy in my Rust microservice. Um, you'll see a notification pop up in a second because it's it's going to be a lot. Oh, I think we missed it. There it is. Okay. <laughs> but if we do, if we put that down, I don't know how many I don't know how many messages it's sending per second, but it's sending a lot. But if we scale this down even more and basically just did basically just break this thing. Um, you're, we're going to get a lot of errors now <laughs> because we're sending, you can see the errors. I mean, we're sending that, we sent like 3,000 in like five seconds. I mean, six, five, five to 10 seconds, which is a lot. And you know, we're getting insufficient resources. That makes sense because we're just spamming uh, my, the, the single backend endpoint like crazy. Um, and obviously we're, we're getting a pretty laggy front end, but we still can type and we still can do some things, but we're gonna have to fix that, right? So it's pretty laggy, but let's scale this up again to a normal speed. Um, and then we're back to we're back to normal. But you can still see things that are, are still playing catch up, like, so, because we're getting lag. It's, it's lagging from the front end sending the messages to the back end. That's the that is the bottleneck currently. So we have a couple solutions, but and then we should not let me scroll all the way down the network tab. We should be back to normal now. Yeah, like it, it'll pick back up in a second, but um it's just an interesting problem to to solve. But we have the infrastructure in place for sure. Uh, but again I'm operating on a single <laughs> a single computer. Uh so you know, take that for what it's worth. A um, couple, couple options. We we definitely have pos options. We can either expose another WebSocket to get around, like sending a message up to um, the back end and trying to await that and spinning off a new task, because that'll be really, really resource intensive. We want to probably avoid that. Um, but if we use Signal R, we don't have to wait. We can just send it. And that might work a lot better. So I might, I might, I might look into using SignalR again to solve this problem, just because of how much data that I want to send. I want to be able to make this number. And this is broken math. This is supposed to be the RPM, so it should be more requests when I have a higher number. But I, I have it. It's broken. It doesn't work. So it's actually reversed. So a lower number is more requ <laughs> requests. Um. Uh, so yeah, but you can see like. 
I want to be able to send like 5,000 messages every second and have it handle it just fine. So we definitely have the infrastructure in place. I might, I might tool around with like a WebSocket connection and try to alleviate this. Um, yeah, and then just send it from website. My make another, um, or honestly, we could probably take advantage of this endpoint I already have here. Or uh, well, maybe we. I was what I was what I was gonna say was we could probably. Um, make another endpoint that I could hit with signal R that would then send it to RabbitMQ. I don't know if there's a way to, I don't know if there's a way, like obviously I could just send a message from my front end to RabbitMQ directly. Um, and I still, I might do that to be honest. I would like to route it through my back end though. Um, I don't know. We'll see. There's a lot of options. We're definitely not stuck. So there's a few things I like to try just to see what gets me the most performance. Um, but yeah, so this is like a pretty cool kind of, and obviously it's going to lag like crazy. It's still playing. I got to get off this page. It's making so many requests. <laughs> I wonder if this is still processing. Hopefully not. No, I think it's done. But yeah, you can kind of see like that demo. Hopefully that makes sense. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, the next thing I'm going to add once I get that um, bottleneck figured out is I'm going to um, basically add in my Python service to graph the temperature curve. So I'll just add it into this and do that. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it another consumer of that the message queue or the engines queue or if I'm going to um, send it from Rust to um, um, my Python service. Not sure about that yet. I might make it a consumer on my uh, notifications queue, but or my engines queue. But we'll see. But yeah. Anyway, so that's it. So this is kind of like somewhat functioning prototype for the notification handling. Um, but yeah. So this is kind of just like a. Hopefully, this is like this is raw, as raw of system design as you can get, I feel like. Um, but, yeah, so anyway, I appreciate you all watching, and I'll see you in the next one.